I will start the recording now. It looks like the audience is connected now. All right, are you ready, RJ? Yep. All right, I'd like to call together, uh, call to order the Town of McCandless um, meeting of Town Council for February the 22nd, 2021. And we will begin our meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance by council member and invocation by council member Woods. Thank you, Madam President. As February draws to a close, I'd like to honor Black History Month by sharing a poem by Langston Hughes. Hughes was an American poet, social activist, novelist, playwright, and columnist from Joplin, Missouri. One of the earliest innovators of the then new literary art form called jazz poetry, Hughes is best known as a leader of the Harlem Renaissance. I dream a world by Langston Hughes. I dream a world where man, no other man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its paths adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soul nor avarice blights our day. A world I dream where black or white, whatever race you be, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free where wretchedness will hang its head and joy like a pearl attends the needs of all mankind. Of such I dream, my world. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think that was our best one yet in terms of coordination. <laughs> or maybe just a lot of people didn't say it out loud. Um, so we, I'd like for us to get started with announcements. But first of all, I know there are several people who um, of the citizenry that are here this evening. So let me just ask you now to go ahead and put your name, your address, and um, that you, I guess we don't have a public hearing, so everyone will speak during um, the public comment uh, in the chat box now so that we can go ahead and be um, getting started on that. Okay. All right. Some announcements. Cleanup day is April the 10th, so please sign up on the website for roadside cleanup. Also, we are accepting applications for a uh, position on the activities committee. If you think that's something that you would be interested in, um, the application is also on the town website. The Heritage Center is going to be reopening March the 17th. So we look forward to that and the programming that, um, that they are organizing. Also an announcement that the staff from the UPMC Sports Medicine the Physical Therapy and Rehab Department and Passivant Passive Foundation will be working with the town regarding the fitness court programming. Um, it will be a combination of virtual and live programs um, to promote and utilize our fitness court. So um, stay tuned for some of those details that will be coming forth. I'd also like to thank the community, our generous community for their donations to the North Allegheny Women's Association Food Collection for the North Hills Community um, Organization. They're still counting bags. So everyone um, really pitched in and uh, we really appreciate that. Also, we have um, update on our Instagram. Our new Instagram um, was launched and we have 204 followers already. So that's pretty good. And our cable channel is up. And if you, if you are not able to, or you can tell your friends, if you're not able to stay for the whole meeting, you just have to see how it all ended, then you can watch this on our cable channel, which is uh, channel 98 on Wednesday, following the meeting at 7.30 p.m. Um, all right. All right, now we have a citizen award. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that the resolution was passed in June the 20th of 2020 
to recognize residents, businesses, and groups who have made a significant contribution to the town of McCandless. Any citizen can make a nomination at any time. Tonight, we would like to recognize the North Hills Ebony Women. This group meets at La Roche University. It was founded in 1979 and is based in McCandless. It is a support, service, and social organization devoted to the continuous recognition of African-American heritage, education, and unity. New, which is the acronym for North Hills Ebony Women, um, some of the activities that they have supported and are involved in are the annual scholarship fund for local scholars, they have two annual fundraisers, which are used to encourage leadership among women of color and to recognize their outstanding achievements. They also have a mentoring program, as well as sponsoring the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Breakfast. That has been going on for 21 years. They also support numerous local community organizations. Is there a member from the North Hills um, Ebony Women to accept this? I, I'm going to stop the screen share now just so I can see the um, participants and everyone a little easier. Okay. Um, Ms. Williams I'm, is, I'm, uh, is on. Ms. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Okay. Ms. Williams. All right. If I have sent anybody the wrong camera or microphone request, I apologize. Let me just find the person we need to find here. Okay. All right. Um, hello. Let's see. Hello. Hello. Okay. okay. This says the host has taken my video. So did you the, open it up? <laughs> it, it is asking uh, your permission to start your video. Uh, okay, well, William, you. Is there anyone else I should be having on screen here right now? <laughs> um, Evelyn Lawler is our current president. And if you want to bring her up, that would be fine as well. All right. He is on. I am on. <laughs> yes. Okay. Great. Okay. So, ladies, um, I the town of McCandless wishes to recognize you and to thank you and your group um, for your contribution, the contributions of the North Hills Ebony Women, um, and present you with the certification award of recognition. So, we thank you very much. Are, are there any comments that you would like to make? Uh, yes, I am Jill Wesley Williams and a resident of McCandless. And on behalf of our president, Evelyn Lawler, and the members of North Hills Ebony Women, I would just like to take the opportunity to thank the town of McCandless, the council, for giving us a citizenship award. Um, we're very honored and pleased. We've been working in the community for well over 40 years as individuals, um, members of the community, as well as collectively as North Hills Ebony Women. We've served on many boards and community um, activities and committees, uh, primarily in schools and um, service groups. I heard you mention um, the food banks and collecting food. We've done that. We go as way back as you had mentioned to starting um, our first meetings were at the YWCA on Thompson Run Road. So we go back way back then and started mentoring uh, young women um, in the um, McIntyre shelter. So we kind of go way back and we used to um, take bulletin boards of African-American achievers and go from school district to school district. And we've been through many in North Allegheny years ago, just trying to establish some information for um, young people coming up to recognize the efforts and the impact that all citizens have had in the United States and America and locally as well. Um, I think on behalf of us, again, we are just so honored to be able to accept this award and we appreciate you recognizing our efforts and we will continue to do so individually and collectively. That's my granddaughter. <laughs> but thank you very much. It, it is our pleasure. Uh, thank you all very much. Your certificate, which you saw flash up on the screen, is down at Town Hall. I'm very sorry that I'm not able to hand it to you in person and shake your hand. It's a sign of the times. We understand. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being able to be with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> okay, uh, are we good to switch the cameras and mics off for this one? I think so. All right. And, and we can start, um, and next is public comment. So um, RJ, if you wanna get started with uh, that, that will be fine. Yes, we've, we've got either two or three. I'm not sure if um, Ms. Williams was signing up for public comment or just signing up to let us know that she was here to speak, but um, she is number two if she's here to make a comment. So okay. Okay. Uh, I, I will send her a camera and mic request after we've got uh, Deb Sagan speaking next. Or okay. no, you're not? I just, I thought we were supposed to sign up in attendance. Is that what oh, Kim was saying before? That's what it sounded, so that's why I did that. I was trying I to be a good doobie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Um, no, this was for a uh, public comment. No, I have no public comment, but thank you very much. Okay. I'd like to, I would like to just say thank you for recognizing Northville 70 women. Um, that was, that's great. And I appreciate the uh, opportunity to do that. Thanks, cool. Deb. Okay. So in that case, it looks like we've got Greg Wachoskis is our one actual public comment sign up. I am gonna send him a mic and camera request now. Well, Greg, congratulations. After uh, about a month and a half of trying, you've gotten on here, good job. Thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, good evening. I, I believe uh, the last town council meeting, uh, President Council Kim Zachary mentioned that there were plenty of comments from others by the e emails, uh, by emails on the fracking ordinance. In, just, in the interest of uh, transparency, would, be would it be possible for the council to share those emails or other written comments and put them on the uh, town council website with respect to uh, a particular topic like fracking. And in addition, would it be possible to share other emails or correspondence sent by McCann citizens to town council on topics before town council as they come up. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention and consideration. Thank you, Greg. Uh, no other comments? No, uh, that that was the only public comment sign up I had. All right. Okay, we will move on to the minutes then. Um, uh, council members have received uh, the minutes for the meeting of February 8th. Were there any changes or adjustments or um, alterations that need to be made on those minutes? Madam President? Yes. The final section, new business, um, it did accurately record that we adopted resolution number two of 2021, but it did not have um, me make the motion or Councilman Smith second the motion. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is the count on there? I don't recall. Is it? Was, was the count on It was there? unanimous, yes. Okay, and, and, but that is recorded? That is yeah. Recorded. Okay, all right, yeah. Okay, any other changes or misses that we can? <clears throat> okay, all right then, uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes um, with the with uh, Council Member Wood's amendment? So moved. Okay. Is there a second? All right. Second. Councilmember Smith. All right, um, all those in favor, please indicate by of accepting the minutes um, as amended uh, for February 8th, 2020, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes were approved. Um, liaison reports, the activities committee. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, the report, the minutes from our last meeting is in your packet and I'm happy to answer any questions. But I do want to take uh, this time to just publicly announce a couple of things. Number one is a thank you to our junior council person, Raj, and also from the town, John and Sandra, for sharing some of our February activities on Instagram and on social media. I think they were all very well received, and we appreciate that. 
and also to encourage anyone who is interested in the activities advisory committee that the deadline for application is March 12th and we'd lo really love to have you and a reminder that this is not by ward that any resident in McCandless is strongly encouraged to apply and I'm happy to answer any questions. And one more quick announcement for everyone to look, um, be on the lookout. We're going to be holding our lucky bingo on March 18th. Should be lots of fun with a St. Patrick's Day theme. But if there are any questions, happy to take them now. All right. Thank any you, questions? Council. That's that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member uh, Clunan. Um, EAC. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the minutes of the last EAC meeting are in Council's packet. Um, I did want to mention that uh, I believe last meeting or the last time we talked about EAC, we spoke about the uh, uh, pit capstone uh, project, uh, and that we had two sets of pit students who have taken on um, projects um, under the auspices of the EAC. And we don't have it confirmed as of yet, but it is possible that um, those two groups will be making short presentations at the March 10th EAC meeting. And they would be very interested um, in having as many council members who might be available to hear them. I don't believe it will be long. It will probably be all in maybe a half an hour of the meeting. Um, but I will confirm to everyone if that uh, presentation occurs, invite you, and certainly we'd welcome your, um, you attending through Zoom that night if you can. Um, the other thing is that the EAC, that I think it's probably going to come through um, outside of a council meeting, but there is a project form that is almost complete um, for the EAC to undertake. Um, preparing a recommendation to the town for landscape plantings, appropriate landscape plantings um, for new developments in the town. So um, that might be coming your way as well. Uh, anybody have any questions? I also saw in your report, Council Member Swanholz, that um, your speaker series is looking for um, some ideas, some suggestions. So if there are any council members that um, have some great ideas, please forward those um, to Council Member Sponholz for the EAC to consider for the speaker series. Excellent, thank you. If there are no questions, oh, are you, you have something else? No, 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 I was gonna- okay. If there's you. nothing else, then um, I'm, that completes my report. Okay, um, the Heritage Center. Uh, information is all in your packets, including the minutes. And I'd just like to point out that they put in a uh, 2020 year end report, just kind of summarizing uh, some of the stuff that went on and the, the social media impact and everything like that. So I'd encourage you to take a look. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Okay. All right, uh, junior council member. Uh, Raj was not able to make the meeting this evening. Okay, all right. Um, ambulance Authority. Thank you. Um, the, there's quite a bit of information in council packets, uh, the minutes, uh, the financials, compliance committee minutes, um, all of which um, represent the current status of what's going on with the MFPA. So if anyone has any questions or comments, let me know. Hearing none, oh, David, did you have something? No, guess not. I was gonna say I could if you want. Looks like, <laughs> look, I was gonna say it looks like they are doing much better than what was feared, you know, six to eight months ago. Uh, and so that's pretty encouraging. Yeah, their subscription program is, um, is doing better since the changes that they made. And um, they're going out to the other municipalities um, shortly, plus the capital campaign will be kicking off. And um, we have offered from McCandless to um, work with them if they'd like to use our social media platforms um, to help them with those campaigns as well. So um, we're hopeful. Awesome. Shelly, I did have a quick question actually. The, the 50,000 that was mentioned 
that they they thought they lost, you know, just due to billing practices. Yeah. Is that? Do you know if it, was that like an annual number or is that a? Uh, that was an estimated annual number, and we've been assured that the um, I don't know the the, the accounting um, billing process that led to that um, will not happen again. Great, thank you. Anything That's else up. for ambulance authority? Okay, um, it looks like the MIDA did not meet. Um, next is the sanitary authority. Uh, minutes and everything are in your packet. They, uh, they did elect their new officers not a whole lot of changes, president still the same, um, but uh, other than that, nothing to, to really highlight. Okay, um, North Hills Council of Governments. The January minutes will not be available until March. Okay, library. Library Authority, David? Oh, sorry, I was just pulling it back up. Um, the minutes are in your packet and um, you know, still scheduling is, is still kind of subject to how COVID is going, uh, but uh, the, the library has been reacting as appropriate and, and everything seems to be going pretty well. And the minutes and everything are in your packet. Any questions? <laughs> For Council Member Smith. Okay. Um, the Community Development Authority did not meet. Personnel Board um, tried to have a meeting, didn't quite work out. We're still working on that. Um, Planning Commission, you have the um, minutes there, and we have some business that's coming up a little bit um, later this evening. Any questions? Not really any questions for that. Uh, technology committee? The minutes are in your packets. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, there was also, I noticed, um, a call out for um, the other committees that possibly could have um, some ideas for some programming for the channel 98, some content. So. Um, I know the activities committee and the EAC will probably be big um, fillers of some of that. But um, if you have some ideas, please um, contact council member Woods so we can kind of get some content on that and get that um, up and running. Anything else from the technology committee questions? Okay. Um, volunteer firefighter steering committee. Uh, the meeting minute notes are in your packets, and that was actually the first meeting almost the last year, I'd say. Um, the next meeting will be May 4th uh, at 7 o'clock. Okay. Any questions for Council Member Spiger? Um, zoning Hearing Board. Uh, the minutes from the January meeting are in your packet. And if you have any questions, please let me know. No questions. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, the um, president of council's report and correspondence. We have, um, is Mark? On Mark, is, Mark is somewhere. <laughs> I just got to scroll for a while. That, 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 is, that is for sure. Mark is somewhere. Yes, he is somewhere. <laughs> I saw his name. Um, I found him. You did? Okay. Good. I, I did. did. Just waiting for mic and camera request. Hi, Mark. There, there's his eye. Oh, there he is. There's all of your face. Believe Hi, it or not, I'm here. <laughs> um, so um, tonight we want to recognize... Um, Mark Sabina, but we're, we're going to do a formal recognition and in-person recognition of him um, Wednesday. So um, look for that on our social media sites. But um, I think we can recognize him twice, 51 years. I think you get recognized twice. I think that's okay. So um, 
here we go. On February 2nd, 1970, at age 19, Mark started work with the town of McCandless as a laborer. After seeing his hard work and his talent, he was promoted to superintendent in 1980. Uh, the, a lot of people don't realize, but the public work department provides, um, provides for the safe and efficient movement of vehicles and pedestrians through the um, maintaining and repair of all streets, curbs, storm sewers, and other facilities within the streets right of way. Some of the other responsibilities that Mark has had over the years include um, supervising the street cleaning, the recycling program, the leaf and yard waste collection, snow and ice control, traffic control, making and devices. Every sign, I think it's every sign in McCandless that you see, Mark had a hand in making. And every, almost everything you see at Community Day is a result of Mark and the Public Works Department. The Public Works um, budget accounts for 25% of the town's total budget. When Mark was asked what he enjoyed most about his career, he said, and I quote, getting done what needed to be done. And I think that really sums up Mark's attitude and um, how he the the um, how he has um, pursued his career in McCandless. A lot of people don't know that Mark spent 33 years as a medic, two additional years as an EMT uh, for the McCandless Franklin Park Ambulance Authority. Mark's got big plans for his retirement. He's going to spend some time with his five children, 13 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. He has some property that he's gonna work on. He's gonna fish from his boat and hunt and golf with his wife, Faye, which sounds like a pretty good retirement um, to me. Look at the smile on his face. Um, I told you we would make a formal presentation on Wednesday. So Mark from the town, we recognize your valuable contribution for the past 51 years and we wish you a happy and healthy retirement. Is there anything you would like to say? Wow. Um, I, I appreciate everything that, that I have been able to accomplish. I would never have been able to do it without the guys that, that have worked under me for these 51 years. And it's an endless number. I couldn't even begin to account the, the number of fellows in, in uh, both full-time and part-time guys that have worked for the Public Works Department over the years. Right now, I've got a great set of guys. I have always had a great set of guys. And without them, I could not have accomplished everything that I have. Um, I appreciate each and every one of them. I wish them the best in the future. Uh, I wish council the best in the future. And um, I'm very thankful that, that I have had this opportunity. Obviously, I raised my family, which, as you can imagine, was a rather large family. And, um, and uh, we've, they've all, I'm very proud of all of them. And uh, Hope that everybody in McCandless continues to flourish and, and be a real great community to live in, to work in, and to be a part of. And I, I thank you all. Thank you, Mark. Another sign of a true leader is a person who gives credit to all the people who did the work and doesn't just take them to self. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. You get a round of applause. <laughs> all right we'll see you wednesday mark i will be there okay so will we um i have another um correspondence report to let everybody know that the um port authority is hosting a live town meeting to find out what transit investment that you is the most important to you. So you can find that on the um, Port Authority website. You can sign up, there's like four of them. So I really encourage the community that has some ideas about what kind of um, transit you would like to see in the North Hills um, coming in the future to please log on to those and give your, give your insight on those. Uh, town manager's report. Thank you, Madam President. I uh, you all received a copy of my report 
uh, on Friday. There's two items that I'd like to highlight here. The first is that uh, we received a letter agreement from Allegheny County Parks uh, for the continued use of the Lakeview Field um, that the McCandless Athletic Association has uh, been using over the last uh, five to six years, if not longer. Um, if the council, if I can get a, just a head nod from the council um, that they are in favor of continuing that arrangement with the county, um, I would appreciate it. The only cost to the town is some of our time associated with mowing the, the grass up there at the field. Otherwise, uh, this is uh, at no cost to the town. Any questions that anybody on the council has regarding this agreement? So Bob, if we don't need a vote, do we just kind of give a thumbs up or what do you thumbs want? Up, thumbs what up you will want? be fine. Thumbs up will be fine. Which is a vote, but okay. Good deal. <laughs> An unofficial vote. An unofficial okay. vote. That's good. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I wanted to just highlight uh, this evening, uh, as I noted in the report, this time of the year, we would normally be considering a distribution of any excess regional asset district revenues that we had received when we compare, um, in this case, it would have been 2020 revenues uh, versus 2019s. Um, Unfortunately, this has been uh, one revenue source that has uh, been impacted by the COVID pandemic. Uh, we actually received $30,000 less in regional asset district funds um, in 2020 compared to 2019. That is a 7% reduction. Uh, so that means that we would not be making any distribution for uh, this year. And just for reference purposes, that $30,000 in reduced income probably equated to uh, one month's uh, revenue. So that's roughly the impact that COVID had on that one, that one particular revenue. And that would complete my report. Um, Bob, I noticed on your report that um, there was a recommendation for the pedestrian bridge for the uh, Grub sidewalk. Does council need to give a nod for that or are they just gonna proceed with that recommendation? Um, unless council would have any um, concerns with that recommendation, I think we could move forward. Okay. Uh, we're going to put together a, a bridge that requires as little maintenance as possible and uh, you know, keep it cost effective in the process. Okay. Does anybody have any questions regarding that? Mike. What are we giving the nod for to go to start the design, to do a bid for it, to build it? Um, this would be putting uh, together, we could, I guess from the, the various designs that we've sent out as alternatives, I guess my question would be, does anybody have any preference? Do we want to try to keep it as close as we can to the other pedestrian bridge that goes between Town Hall and uh, the Heritage Center or you know, was there a specific design element that you, you all liked in it? It seemed like the least maintenance and the most cost effective, which are two big things in my book, were the um, weathered steel. Um, so I, um, plus that's kind of a little bit charming, I think. Um, so I, I was fine with that. That's the one they recommended also. Yes. It, it was also the best value and most durable because it didn't have to be painted. So. That's the one I personally thought would be the best. Well, what I will do then Friday, just so that we know that we're all on the same page, I'll send out one more picture of that, okay. that design. And then if everyone's okay with that, we will move forward. 
So this um, is all covered in a grant that we got, Mike, just to kind of refresh everybody. That's is, correct. Is that we um, put in for a grant and we were given a grant for the sidewalk, the pedestrian bridge and the crosswalks that are also associated with it. So all of this comes in within that grant. So um, it's, all, it's all covered. And, okay. and we do have to we do have to add on our agenda about the other part of that grant. We do have to figure out, um, and I, I think we need to put that on March's agenda, Bob. We, yes. we have to discuss and figure out what we're gonna do with the rest of that because it's not working out where we thought it was gonna be. Um, so um, we'd like um, the engineers to come up with maybe some ideas of, about some other places that possibly we could use that money. We have to change a request for that grant, but anyway, we'll we'll get that information out. But that needs to be on the next agenda because we have very to, good. It's not working out where we thought it was going to. We'll add that. And Madam um, good. Oh, just a, a question on that: Is that that portion that you're talking about? Is that the the portion where it's projected to run a significant amount over what the grant is? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, significant. Yeah, over yeah. Time. I would definitely like to to yeah. see what our options are with that. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, right. And um, and our um, engineering company is supposed to be putting together a prioritized list of sidewalks so that when something like this happens, we can say, oh, this is a high priority because it's a high traffic area and it costs about this much and the grant is for this much, so that's perfect. Let's go with that one or. Well, we don't have enough for that one, but the next in priority is this little smaller space. So the engineers are working on prioritizing sidewalks so that when we get grant money with this, we don't have to look around and go, well, do you know where you want to put a sidewalk? I don't know. Where do you want to put a sidewalk? You know, so we can actually have some good ideas of where sidewalks are needed the most. And Fire Marshal Stack asked me to remind everybody of the... Uh, strategic planning class for fire departments tomorrow evening at Beatty Tech. Um, we are working to either record that or broadcast the class tomorrow. We can send that information out to everybody who can't make it in person. Any other questions for the manager's report? Okay, town attorney's report. Everybody, I submitted my report for your review, and if you have any questions, and I'm happy to answer them, but they're probably most appropriate for an executive session. So, thank you. That's all I have, Madam President. Okay, thank you. Um, old business. Um, we have the checklist of bills. Were there any comments or questions um, on that? Is, is, is Trisha Greathouse here? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, I, I did have one question. Uh, Trisha, do you know just offhand on um, 16478, all the gateway engineering, all those, how much of that is reimbursable? How much of that money is, it's like $13,000, which looks like a huge expense, but how much of that actually are we reimbursed for? You're talking about the gateway on 114? Yes. Um, most of that is escrow work, except for, I'll have to get back to you specifically. There, there are a couple that are town engineering costs for stormwater and, um, the sidewalks. Okay. I just, I, I mainly wanted to just make a point of people looking at, at the uh, budget that those are not all expenses. I'm trying to figure out some way, um, to have on there so we can see that, those actually are reimbursable um, charges. So you're not like, what are we doing spending $15,000 on engineering? We're really not. That's no. like, roughly $4,000 of that was reimbursed. How much? Roughly 4,000 of that was reimbursed. Only 4,000 of it? In, in this particular case. In this case, I can tell you that the one we paid in February was entirely escrow payment. Okay. So, so it, it alternates depending on what work they're doing. Yeah, it would be so nice if we could indicate some way on there so we knew what was um, escrowed and what was 
I can work with Melinda to do that for y'all. It, 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 would, it would help me, I know. Any other questions about uh, checklist of bills? Okay. Is there a motion to approve them? So moved. Okay. Council Member Clunin. Second. Second. Okay. Mike Terrell. Okay. Um, second chance for questions. Okay. All those in favor of, of approving the checklist number one for January 1st to January 31st indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Checklist approved. Um, Bob, is there anything or, or are there any questions from any council members or are there any comments or anything that needs to be said in addition to this cable franchise agreement before we vote on any questions or concerns by anyone? Not receive any other comment. Okay. Following the public hearing. Okay. Okay. All right then. Is there um, a motion to a um, to adopt ordinance 1512? No moved. Okay. All right. Council Member Woods. Second. Second. All right. Council Member Schweiger. All right. Uh, second chance. Any questions? Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting Ordinance 1512, authorizing renewal of the cable franchise agreement negotiated by the COG uh, for Verizon, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, all right, the next item is a discussion on tentatively identified ordinance number 1513, amending the codified ordinances of the town of McCandless at article 701 animals to regulate the feeding of deer within the town. Um, everyone has had um, this ordinance, ordinance submitted to them. It has been put on the website. Um, any, we'll start with council members. Are there questions or comments by um, council members? And President, I, I had a question. Council Member Smith. Um, so, you know, so, so the, the ordinance is on, you know, people feeding deer. Is this a step that we have to take before we can expand the hunting program? Or like, how does this tie into, because my, my view of it in a vacuum is we should have the deer management plan first. And then if we need to have an ordinance preventing people from feeding deer, then do it rather than the ordinance first and then follow up with a, a management plan. Um, that's just kind of my, my overall view of governments is that I don't like starting with an ordinance regulating what people do without actually having the plan there. But is this something we have to do before we can expand that hunting? Um, we, we, do not have, we do not have to do it in this order. This is the recommended um, order from the uh, game. game. Game Commission, thank you, thank you. I lost my words there from the Game Commission has recommended this. This is how um, neighboring communities have um, started their um, management program. So um, that's how we decided to do it this way. But it is not required to do it in this order. It was just recommended. And so we followed the recommendation of the experts. That was all. Uh, uh, Council Member Clooney. Um, first, just to Councilman Smith's point, um, I agree, I don't like to limit our residents, but I think in, in especially this situation, there are many uh, communities nearby that have, you know, already kind of invented the wheel on this. And I think, you know, we should continue to learn from their success and failure and apply what we can to McCandless. And I believe that the no feed ordinance was after looking at other things, the advised way to go. So I agree with um, supporting this right now. Um, and I also have a question. And I guess I'm wondering if 
if as a council, maybe I'm not sure if Mr. Grimm can answer this, but um, you know, neighboring communities, uh, the issue came up, I noticed in the conversation last week. And, and I know and, I, and I, I, I live, I live uh -oh, I'm getting uh -oh, feedback, I'm getting sorry. feedback. Sorry. I'm get, I live very close to both Hampton and Pine. And literally if, uh, you know, 30 yards from my house, I could have a Hampton neighbor feeding, which would do nothing to help the deer moving from North Park over to that. So I'm just hoping that as we move forward with this planning that getting all of the communities surrounding McCandless uh, on board and part of the conversation is going to happen as well. That's what, and that's an excellent point, uh, Council Member Clunan, and that's why I really felt like that the panel discussion that was, um, that happened just this, this past week um, so accurately addressed the um, overpopulation in the entire North Hills. Mm -hmm. So we do have some neighbors who are addressing this issue and it is our hope that some of our other neighbors will also join in on this um, endeavor because you're right. It's just like the pandemic. If everybody does it, you get the best results. Right, thank you. I, I did have one other question on the, on the proposed ordinance. Council Marshall. Uh, for, for the hunting programs, whatever we might consider in the future, is can any part of a hunting program be uh, with bait? I mean, can baiting be part of the hunting program? We we are not we are not discussing the hunting program tonight. I I understand that, but under this this ordinance, if we wanted to do that in the future, because of the way it's worded, it couldn't even be part of. A, a hunting program, you wouldn't be able to bait as part of a hunting program without will, changing this ordinance. I will tell you that while the program is not set in stone that we are looking at, um, and it could be adapted to accommodate what McCandless works best for us, there is no calling as part of the, um, the deer management program at this point. So, um, Right now, that is not part of what we would be considering unless we decided to change that. I, I'll just, if I could chime in, I know baiting was tried in uh, Mount Lebanon and, and failed uh, miserably in most communities now. Um, do not use baiting programs. They simply identify properties and, you know, you have folks with uh, bow and arrow um, in tree stands hunting the property etc. So that, that's typically how it is. I, I don't foresee the need to do baiting, but once you all in, engage this program, if you do engage with a, a hunting program, you'll have to wait a few seasons until you see what kind of results you get anyway. So I, I don't, if you ever decided to even think about baiting, we're talking several years in the future, probably at, at best. Okay. I, I'm just not familiar enough with how they do the the hunting, you know, if that's just part of kind of a normal, uh, you have these sites where you can go on and you, you know, part yeah, of yeah. doing that is to lure the deer and I'm just not familiar enough, so. Well, you are gonna become very familiar because we have the <laughs> suburban whitetail deer hunting um, organization coming on the 22nd of March. So stay tuned for their PowerPoint presentation, which um, you will be um, hearing then. Any other council members? Comments, questions? Okay, um, I'd like to tell the public that if anyone has um, and would like to send comments to council, please feel free that you can email the town administration or us individually if you have any comments um, about this uh, do not feed ordinance. Okay, all right then. Um, if there's nothing else on that, let me see where we are. Um, then it looks like we're moving to new business. A discussion of the land development site plan application for the plan known as Dialysis Clinic Plan for Dialysis Clinic Incorporated. The property is located at 8443 Perry Highway. 
Uh, parcel number 714R297. Um, RJ, is this you? Yes, that is, well, sort of, I guess. Um, it's a planning item. We've got a couple people from DCI here as well. Um, Kaylee, you're gonna have to tell me, would you like Kayla unmuted and would you like anybody else on the screen and unmuted? Uh, I think we have Kayla with me here tonight and Ira. Um, I okay. think those are the only two. I'm going to send both of you microphone requests and camera requests. Um, and for you all that have been to the planning commission, this runs the same way as a planning commission meeting. Um, mics are off unless uh, I send you a request to turn them on. So do let me know if you have to mute and, and uh, I will unmute you again. All right. Um, so just as a brief introduction for the council members, uh, this is a plan presented by Dialysis Clinic Inc. Um, and Bowler Engineering, who works with them to build, shocker, a dialysis clinic potentially um, on Perry Highway. It, it, the site is, you know, for, for sort of the local orientation, um, it is due north of Howard Hanna. Uh, it, it would encompass those last few vacant parcels on that side of the highway. Um, this has come before the Planning Commission a couple different times, some different revisions uh, to the site plan in regards to requests they had made for parking spot locations. Um, and I believe that there are the full land development plans, the last iteration at the Planning Commission in the internal council packet. Uh, there was also one slide with a general um, color rendering of the site plan in the public packet. Uh, council has the engineer's review letter as well. Um, DCI will be resubmitting this pursuant to the uh, comments on uh, at the engineer's letter, you know, just a couple technical things. Um, but at this point, the engineers were comfortable that those could be revised during this council um, discussion sort of window here. So um, unless anyone has any particular questions for me before they kick it off, I am gonna turn it over to Kaylee Bevington um, who represents DCI and the engineering firm they've been working with. Hi everyone, thank you RJ so much. Um, she pretty much covered uh, a good bit of the intro there. So like she said, my name is Kaylee Bevington. I work with Bowler, uh, we are local here to Pittsburgh. Um, I'm here tonight with Kayla Sloan and Ira Chilton. They're with Projects, that is the project architect for DCI. Um, do you so, need co host to do the PowerPoint? Uh, I will, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. I, you have to give me permission probably. Yeah, you're, you're good to go whenever you're ready now. Okay, um, so I'll just give you a quick little rundown about DCI and then I have um, some PDFs I'll put up on the screen for everyone to see. Um, so Dialysis Clinic is a nonprofit service organization. Uh, they provide care to patients with end-stage renal disease. Uh, they have many clinics all over the country, including several in the greater Pittsburgh area already. Um, DCI is proposing to develop a, an approximately 2.14 acres of land located at 8443 Perry Highway. Um, the dialysis clinic will have about a 9,900 square foot footprint. The site is currently three parcels um, and kind of going concurrently with this land development package, we will have a lot consolidation plan to consolidate those three parcels into one. Uh, most of the site is currently undeveloped, except for one single family home and gravel driveway that's on, uh, I think it's the most northern parcel. Uh, the project will include the installation of utilities, landscaping, storm sewer, all necessary to support the development. Uh, the dialysis clinic itself will have 24 treatment stations. The clinic will receive patients from both ambulances and personal vehicles. And the typical hours for this location will be about 5 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So that just gives you a kind of a quick overview of DCI. Let me share my screen here. Uh, give me a thumbs up or something if you can see my screen. Okay, great. <clears throat> so uh, like RJ said, this was in one of the packets that went out. This is a color rendering of the site. Um, for orientation here, we've got Perry Highway. Uh, Montclair Avenue. This is the new sheets up here on this corner. And just to the south of our site is the Howard Hanna property. 
you can see we have the building here located on kind of an existing ridge line um, on the existing topography. We're utilizing as much of the existing dense vegetation to the north and west sides of the property line as we can. There are two retaining walls. They're tiered um, so that we complied with the code requirement of no taller than six foot walls. Um, for stormwater, we have a rain garden in the front that discharges to Perry Highway. And in the rear, we have an underground stormwater detention system that will actually be working with Howard Hanna to go across their property and connect into a public sewer to the south. This is just a Google Maps um, aerial view of the site today as it is today. Um, like I said, you can see it's pretty much undeveloped. You've just got this one gravel drive and existing residents here um, that will be raised as part of this development. From a street view, <clears throat> from this view, you're coming up from the south. This is the site here. You can see the site sits a little bit higher than Perry Highway. And this is coming from the north over here. Um, this is that one residence um, that's on the northern edge of the property there. <clears throat> this is the existing conditions plan for the site. Um, not a whole lot of new information there, but it's just good to see. You can see there is a good bit of topography on the site. Um, and this is that ridge I was talking about before where we are placing the building and then we'll be filling in um, around that on these sides to balance the site. We are not <laughs> anticipating any haul off or import of material as part of the grading for this development. Here we have some color renderings um, produced by the architect of the building. Um, you can see each of these elevations here uh, it should be a really nice building. Uh, the finishes are all, um, they comply with what's requested in the code. And I believe the architect has provided um, a narrative, which was one of the things requested in the engineer's letter. So we'll be providing that to Gateway as well. These are a couple other elevations. Um, you can see here, this shows all the sides of the building. And then here we have a floor plan once it loads. Um, there, there we go. So you can see here, patients are dropped off up on this corner and then you have all of the treatment stations. <clears throat> and then um, a lot of the materials are actually processed on site here back in this back corner, um, which is where that loading area is where trucks bring in chemicals and equipment um, to do the treatment of the water back here. We will be requesting two waivers as part of this development from the council. Um, these are mentioned in the Gateway's engine, um, engineer's review letter. Um, I believe Dan Dazroth was supportive of these waivers. He didn't seem to be concerned with them when we discussed them at the planning commission meeting. The first waiver is for the required access to the neighboring property to the south. Um, there's just a lot of topographic constraints. If I go back to the existing conditions plan, that's the Howard Hanna property down here. And you can see the amount of um, elevation change between the two properties. And it just is not really feasible to make a driveway connection between those two properties. So we'll be requesting a waiver for that connection. Um, for the property to the north, we won't be constructing access at this time. However, we will put a note on the plans and have something in the developer's agreement um, to allow for council to require um, a connection in the future should the two properties have uses that would be benefit from having a connection. And then the second waiver we will be asking for is for three to one interior side slopes of the above, above ground stormwater facility. I think the code requires four to one side slopes um, but we found that three to one is pretty typical in this area. Um, it allows the vegetation to be mowed if necessary. Um, the biggest thing for us is it allows for a bigger footprint on the bottom of the facility, which encourages infiltration, um, which is good for water quality and release rates. So those are the two waivers that we will be requesting as part of this development. 
<coughs> excuse me. And so with that, I bring us back to the uh, rendering here. And I or uh, the architecture team would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Councilmember Smith? Um, just to, uh, because I'm not as familiar with the west side there, what is the slope like going down to the houses behind there? It's a pretty steep slope. Let me pull up the existing conditions plan and see how much of it we can see. <clears throat> you can see it's pretty steep on our actual property and then Pretty much as you leave our property line and then in this top corner here, it's pretty steep. It's steeper than two to one in some spaces. Um, now we won't be touching any of those slopes that are that steep, um, but that's what they are in existing condition. And then the, on, so on that side of the building, what will the lighting be like over there, you know, that's going down into the neighborhood? Is there, is there going to be a lot of light spill over down into the houses that are down below there or? No, there shouldn't be. The photometric plan has been reviewed by Gateway um, and it complies with all of the um, code requirements for lighting. Um, and then between that and the dense vegetation, I highly doubt you'd have any spill over there. Okay. Also, that back area is heavily forested. Mm -hmm. Any other any other questions or comments? Yeah. Looks like maybe Shelly. Oh, I'm sorry, she, she's not on my screen. Uh, oh, Council sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I only have like four people on my um, screen. Uh, Council Mayor Sponholz. Uh, thank you. Um, good presentation. Um, so I know that you've been back and forth um, with um, making this work. So, um, and I wanna thank you and um, for working with us on this with lots of guidance and thoughts. Um, I, have a, I have a couple of comments. Um, one is that, and, and actually you brought up this plan, which is good because um, while we're all happy to see that there are sidewalks in front of your property as there should be, that it appears when Howard Hanna was built that they didn't quite extend their sidewalk. Um, so um, I don't know if this is inappropriate to ask for, because um, you're doing what you're required to do, but, and I don't know why, unless you do, why Howard Hanna did not complete the sidewalk to their property line, but I certainly think that the two sidewalks should connect. Um, I, yeah, functionally, I would agree. I'm not sure why that sidewalk stop there. Um, RJ, I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm kind of wondering because I, I'm, I'm pulling up the street view on my computer right now because it, it looks, I'm hopeful that perhaps it will just be that there is a tree on the Google Maps satellite view that's blocking some of the sidewalk, but I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I'd, I'd have to look more precisely at the property. I, it, um, it looks like it potentially is maybe because of the topography there. It's where that hill takes up off yeah up. yeah you know what that's that's it's probably <laughs> just a couple feet i i want to say um i see it's it yeah it's just a couple feet off the mow line i would have to go back and pull the plans out to see if there was a waiver or anything like that for for that particular piece if it doesn't go all the way up to the line um i'm not sure off the top of my head well i think we should look at that because and i would even say even more especially if it was because Maybe they had to cut into a slope, which made it more expensive. And that's why Howard Hanna didn't do it. But the fact of the matter is now that we're going to have two sidewalks making it pedestrian safe, it won't be safe if they have to step into the road for those three feet. So I suggest that we should fix that problem. Especially uh, council members, Bonholz, especially since we did close off the connection. We did, we are allowing the closing off of the connection of those two properties, which is actually required by the code um, on the back part of the property. I really feel strongly that uh, what you're saying with that sidewalk does need to connect. Yes. You know, I don't um, 
Well, Kaylee, I don't think DCI would have a problem with connecting the sidewalk. We're not talking about a tremendous expense if you don't have to get into the embankment and alter your um, stormwater retention. So right. if that's the case, I mean, I really don't see an issue from DCI extending the sidewalk down there. We're only talking about 20 feet or 30 feet max. I don't even think it's that much, actually. Mm -hmm. It looks small. Um, thank yeah, you. So we'll, yeah, we'll work with um, the township and, and Howard yeah. Hanna and- we'll, we'll Yeah, I mean, this isn't really your problem, but it's kind of becoming your problem sure. because yeah. of what occurred before, so. That was one comment. Um, my other comment I just feel compelled to make is that um, I, I know that it was the decision of planning commission and I certainly respect their thinking. I also um, am quite well aware having walked it myself of the grading, um, the grade differentials between Howard Hanna and, um, and your property. Um, I'm, again, this is not, this is a comment I feel compelled to make there's good reason for design and development standards to include inner property connections, particularly on state roads, busy state roads, such as this one. Again, not your problem, but that's exactly why the zoning ordinance that this town adopted required the inner property connections. And um, I also don't have any problem with the concept you're using with, pro with the property to the north because at this juncture, I do not believe that it is absolutely necessary or it serves a particularly important purpose today um, to have those inner property connections built. But I would have personally been um, much more um, satisfied if you had taken the same approach on both sides of the property, gotten um, approvals, waivers, which I would have supported not to build them, but should in the future when maybe you're not even there anymore and Howard Hanna isn't there anymore and the people at the North aren't there anymore that those access, um, those access ways existed. Um, because obviously if you can find many parcels all the way down Perry Highway, you could deal with the grading issues. So um, I'm, opposed to that. Um, and the third thing is the waiver. We just had a new development um, get approved in town. And one of the things that we specifically, they re requested a waiver on was their basin having a three to one versus a required okay. four to one. Um, and I know this is a debatable issue, um, but I guess this I'll, I'll direct to RJ because we did not allow that on the prior development that was recently approved. And could you tell me how, and I, under, I see that the space constraints that you have here, so I'm not blind to it, um, but RJ, are there more compelling reasons um, on this development where you would recommend the waiver for the, to the three to one versus the four to one? You, you know what? I are are we thinking of Fassinger Farms? Because I, yeah. I okay, yeah. I I would just have to go back and double check exactly what <laughs> you know we put in the staff report at that time for that modification. Um, I had thought that we granted that, but I sure we could be not. wrong. We so, did not. We um, did not. I think. Oh, you know what? That's right. I remember. Okay, so. <laughs> In, in general, and I, I do want to circle back to comment number two um, with the access points once we wrap up the stormwater discussion, because um, I, I had a couple a couple things to throw in there. Um, regarding the stormwater, generally the conversation that I've had with our, our you know, gateway group and Dan um, Dysroth particularly is that, you know, for one, it is very common to see these three to one slopes. Um, or to have something in your stormwater management and design ordinance that would allow you to adjust the slopes based on engineering and technical justification that it was safe. Um, there was no issue with this particular design for a three to one slope. I believe that the developer for that prior residential subdivision that we had been discussing kind of moved, moved the parts around to um, 
make it so that the stormwater pond was less deep, which actually also benefited them because the way that they rearranged things, they were able to um, remove some grading modification requests where they would have had uh, the edge of the slope of that pond too close to some of the property lines for our grading ordinance. So in the end being, you know, figuring out a way to make it four to one actually eliminated those other issues. Whereas here, um, I think there are a couple things going on with the property with stormwater that also tie into um, that access point request and issue. Um, one is that because the property is sited on that ridge that we sort of saw in that, in that um, topography, existing condition slide. Um, it kind of sits almost on, like there's a dividing line in the middle of this property into two watersheds, right? Mm -hmm. So the the front stormwater that falls in natural condition on the property should be directed towards Perry Highway, whereas the stormwater that falls onto the rear, rear meaning you know, the west side, basically in this case of the property, we'd prefer to direct that to um, either directly to a stormwater system that connects in the back of the property and gets into uh, you know, the storm mains that are already constructed there um, or to control it some way, basically so that we're mimicking the existing conditions of the stormwater on the property. And so just based on the different requirements of the site and the fact that this is supposed to be more of a rain garden instead of a straight detention pond, the infiltration rates are a little different. Um, it's meant to be almost more of a landscape feature and they were able to get more uh, room on the basin, you know, the, the, the bottom of that so that, you know, presumably there are plantings that are a little more friendly to, to that type of design. So I think in this case, there's a good justification for it. Um, is it Part fair to say, RJ, that in this case, that it actually is a more beneficial design to be three to one? Yes. And in fact, to require them to meet the ordinance of four to one, which is obviously going to take up more space looking at this plan, that that in itself might represent a significant hardship for them to develop the property as they require. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. Um, the modification standard just requires that uh, what the developer at is asking for has an equal or better function than what the code would otherwise suggest. Um, so based on the way that you put that, I would say that it fits. I'm helping you out here, guys. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Um, so I, RJ, did you want to comment on, um, I mean, because it, it's just my comment as one council yeah. member about the interconnection issue. Well, normally I'm right there with you. I'll tell you that. Um, I really like that in general, in this area of the town we have in the code that you're supposed to have those inner property connections. Um, I can definitely think of, you know, other places on 19 in the, in the Pittsburgh region, even outside of the North Hills that have really benefited from that type of design. However, um, a really important part of the design of this site was that Howard Hanna's property owners were willing to allow DCI to connect their stormwater system into Howard Hanna's existing private stormwater system, which is how they could convey the stormwater on the rear of the property um, to Perry Highway. So that was something that was important to Howard Hanna when they were working together on um, that stormwater design. You know, they would need easements or some sort of agreement to connect together there. And Howard Hanna was willing to grant that based on the connection in the rear being removed. Um, the reason that we are not necessarily suggesting that an easement be carried forward um, the way that we would be doing in the north side of the property, because that is originally how the Howard Hanna development was recorded. Um, but just based on what's going to end up getting built here um, and, and that, you know, benefit that we got from potentially waiving the connection and, and Howard Hanna being willing to, you know, collaborate on the stormwater, um, it was it was the engineer's opinion that there wasn't really a feasible way to eventually connect these properties with the way that they were being constructed. Um, so it's kind of you know once once we move forward this way, that's what we got. But at the same token, there was I think a, a really good synergy that um, was to be gained from on the stormwater front in potentially waiving that connection point. Thank you, uh, that's RJ. Council Member Smith. RJ, 
two quick questions, I guess. One is I remember on the passenger, the three to one versus four to one. Um, part of the issue was because it was close to the sidewalk that wrapped all the way around there. Uh, and I see it looks like that this slope will also be close to the sidewalk. Uh, is there any sort of, and, and I, I completely get to what you're saying with the, the slope, um, but is there any kind of either railing or other kind of, you know, barrier since, since this is now going to be a sidewalk next to it, mm -hmm. is there anything that should go there in order to protect kind of those same, uh, from those same uh, worries that we had before with the slope being that close to the sidewalk? Yeah, so I think that this is a little bit of a different issue with this same modification request um, because what what drives whether or not you have to either be you know x feet away from the property line or the right of way when it comes to a slope like this is the total depth of how far down you're going mm -hmm. versus the actual slope itself so um it i mean a, a a three to one slope is still you know it's not a cliff it's still mowable it's still one that somebody could walk down um i i don't recall the exact depth of the rain garden but i know that it's it about three feet enough. deep rj yeah i was gonna say it's not deep that's enough that somebody should be able to fall in and as kaylee just said it's it's three feet and that's you know over over the course of i mean it, it yeah it's not designed to hold water up to that three feet right so right. it only has a couple inches of water in it maybe after a rain event um it's never designed to be like full of water yeah yeah so I, I think I that passenger. we were yeah fastinger was just a traditional like retention mm -hmm. pond design um so the mm -hmm. rain gardens usually they're supposed to be almost like a an add value design feature visually um I don't think that we could, well, other than a condition of the modification, we wouldn't necessarily by code require a rail or anything because the depth isn't so great. Um, but I actually think it might look nicer if we just let the rain garden kind of be out there personally. And that sidewalk, RJ, just to add there, the way the topography works, um, the sidewalk actually kind of goes opposite of the topography. So you're not you're not walking on a ridge line next to the rain garden. You're actually walking down below the rain garden as you go towards Howard Hanna. So there's okay. not like a, there's so not like a goes fall up. So it no, goes from the yeah. sidewalk, it goes up and then back down. Yeah, of. right. Okay. It goes, it goes up about, you know, if you're down near the Howard Hanna property, it probably goes up about eight or nine feet or better. And then when it goes back down to, into the pond, it looks like she's only got about a three foot drop. So it doesn't go up and back. down, it goes up and down a little bit and then levels on. Yeah, so basically the land itself can serve as the railing between the sidewalk and the rain guard. Yeah, exactly. The topography is just a natural barrier there. You're not gonna have any kind of falling in or you wouldn't even really have pedestrians anywhere near that rain garden. Okay. And then on the back end for the connection, would the, the way that it's set up now, is that basically going to preclude any future connection if we ever deem it necessary or advisable? There, there would need to be some significant changes to the site work and the existing parking lot in the back to establish a connection in the future. Um, can't say absolutely no way never, you know, because you can engineer anything if you try hard enough. <laughs> but, but realistically, on the south end, at least, it would be off the table. And are there other options that with, even if it's not, if we don't require it now, that would leave it open for the future? Or is, is this pretty much, is there kind of not a way to, to arrange this to, to kind of future-proof it that way. Um, and you know I love that term. <laughs> um, yeah, Howard Hanna was not interested in um, collaborating on the stormwater connection if the access were to be carried forward. Um, and Dan and I's opinion was basically that ultimately the, the stormwater design connecting to Howard Hanna's um, system was worth the recommendation that we go forward with this, even if we can't really future-proof it for something else. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a huge benefit, 
Yeah. And, and it's, a, you know, tying into a private system that way. Um, yeah, the, just, the uh, other option was a level spreader in the back, I think, which made us all a little nervous for the impacts to the property. Yeah, the only way, other way for the water to go is to just drain across the residential properties. Um, it would have been a sheet flow scenario, like she said, but um, Dan was much more comfortable with a controlled discharge through Howard Hanna. And we agree that we think it's a good um, balance that we should. Yeah, that, that all makes sense to me. I was, uh oh, now I'm getting feedback. Um, that all makes sense to me. Um, you know, I, I was just thinking of a way where even without connecting it now, if there was a way to do it, that it would be possible in the future. But it, it, it just looks like the topography is what it is and the layout is going to be uh, what it is. Uh, I mean, I think the benefit versus the, you know, losing being able to do that is worth it. Um, just trying to see if there's a way to kind of have yeah. our team be able to eat it in the future, too. Uh, I'll, 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 uh, I'm going to wait and see if I don't get the feedback. OK, maybe I'll back up. That might work. Um, you know, private property owners could always decide to make that agreement between themselves. I, I think that ultimately, you know, Dan and I had talked about it and we thought, well, you know, there's not really necessarily a sense in, in even recording the easement in this case, because again, just the, the way that it was getting built out, it, it just, there was not a feasible solution engineering wise that we could both get the stormwater. Um, yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, and I, I I'm sure Kaylee, Kaylee will, will attest to this too, that I kind of tried to dig my heels in on that one. And uh, ultimately, I, I just felt that the stormwater benefits were enough to, you know, kind of flip the way that I was thinking about it. Yeah, it was absolutely something we looked at, we studied, we graded it, even um, it was in our initial concepts, because um, RJ was a big advocate for that connectivity. But um, at the end of the day, it just didn't work out. Are there any other, any other council member questions or comments? I have one more quick question. Okay, it's thank you time. for speaking up, Shelly, because I can't yeah, get everybody I, I got on, on that the last time. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, if you look on the, um, this is a question about the uh, stormwater, the storm lines that drain the, um, well, it looks like that drain the, the rain garden section. And there is, um, um, I mean, everything I'm looking here makes makes sense in terms of what's connecting to what. And I'm just, the one, the line that comes out of the rain garden at the very um, southernmost side of the rain garden, and there's a storm line that runs and stops um, just past the front of the building. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Kaylee, you're muted here. There, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, um, this line down here on this south side of the building? Yeah, that line. Where is that dra draining? I'm just, it just ends. Um, I believe I'd have to look at the stormwater plan. My guess is that's picking up um, a yard drain that's over here and then probably uh, roof drains. Okay, it's it's just not. It, if you actually look on your, I mean, something for RJ. Just make sure that because I'm looking at your your C402 plan and it just appears to not be connected to anything. And there's no notes that I could see, at least on that plan, that indicated what it was actually doing, where it was going, or which direction it was flowing. So I'll I'll double check. I don't see yet a stormwater comment from gateway on that. I, I would suspect it probably is a roof drain because I believe we have in our ordinance that you're not supposed to connect your roof drains to anything without explicit approval. Okay. Just asking, that's all I have. Any other comments? <clears throat> I don't see anyone's hand up on the Thank you. Thank you. Overflow. <laughs> oh, Thanks. Carolyn, maybe? Yes, can you hear me? Sorry. So quick question. So going back to the connectivity um, 
did Howard Hanna, did they say anything like why they didn't want to? I didn't know if it was like loss of parking spots or if they mentioned any reason why they weren't interested in doing it. Yeah, they, they were concerned mostly with the um, truck traffic for the okay. waste. Yeah. Okay. I think it was, there was a maintenance concern too, but you know, who, who maintains it and it kind of creates like a gray area for stormwater. So it's just kind of messy and they wanted to avoid it, I think. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. Um, then I think that um, ends our discussion on the um, dialysis clinic. Um, again, citizens can uh, certainly send some written comments to council if they have um, ideas or concerns about it so we can hear from you. Right. And there, there will be um, further revisions pursuant to the remaining technical comments that uh, Gateway had and prior to um, the development actually being brought back to council for a vote, those will all be addressed. Thank right. you so much, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, 12B, it is time to... Um, to uh, approve a construction company for the paving for the roads for uh, 2021. Um, before we get into questions on that, Bob, can you just give us, just kind of review with people how we um, did this bidding process and where we advertise for this? Because you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is be more inclusive and um, get our bidding process out to um, kind of a little further and wider. So can you give us a little short thing on that? Certainly. Um, the First off, let me say that this is uh, part of our overall uh, 18 to 20 year paving program. And uh, these were the uh, roads planned for in 2021 with a few changes that we made based on conditions that we found out the field prior to submitting the, um, the bids out uh, for public consideration. Uh, the town in this case submitted uh, or advertised as we normally would in the Post-Gazette uh, to get a wide spectrum, but we've also in, uh, advertised in minority newspapers uh, primarily the Pittsburgh Courier, uh, so that we could expand our uh, reach into that community as well. So we, um, in addition to posting um, electronically, we've we've done our best to to get out into the other aspects of the community. All right. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any questions about the, um, the bids? I do want to say that the bids are under budget. And um, the, the overall uh, span of bids was fairly tight, all things considered. And um, Youngblood is an excellent paving company. They haven't been in Canvas for a few years. Liberoni had been the low bid the last two years, uh, but Youngblood has a good reputation and we expect a quality product when they come in. Um, comments or questions from council members? All right, I know there was this, some discussion on um, last year's paving that they used to grind and take the millings for free and now we had to pay for that. Is that still the case with this bid? I couldn't tell. We, we have them stored at uh, site just off of Wall Park. So they'll okay. stay the property of the town. Oh, okay. All right. So we're not paying them to take them off. We're, we're keeping them. Okay. All right. I know they used to like take them off for free and then they started charging us. So we're like, okay, now we're going to keep them. Okay. Right. All right. Just, um, just making sure see how that was going to change. And um, I think maybe um, Mark has already left us, but um, is super pave still the way to go? Super pave is required because we're utilizing 
uh, state liquid fuels funds. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess it is the way to go. I know there's been some question about how um, about super pay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of questions. All right. Those are my comments or questions. Does anybody have anything else? Okay. Um, so is there a motion um, to um, award this contract? Did I get someone to read that motion? Madam All right. President. Council Member Smith. I move to award a contract to Young Blood Paving Inc., the lowest responsible bidder for construction and repaving of various town roads under the 2021 paving program at a total bid price of $999,491.57. Is there a second? Second. All right, Council Member Schweiger. Again, any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of awarding this contract to Youngblood Paving indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Um, last on our agenda is discuss, discussion of dissolving the North Pittsburgh Community Development Authority. Uh, Bob, can you tell us a little bit about what that is? I've never seen anything happen with it in my five years on council. So um, can you give, me, give us a little summary? Um, that's about all I can give you, unfortunately, but I'll do my best. The, uh, the North Pittsburgh Community Development Authority was put in place years and years ago with the idea that it could spur development uh, in the North Hills. McCandless and the uh, North Allegheny School District along with the other communities that are uh, coterminous with the school district um, created this authority. Uh, the intent was to um, look at planning and looking that development of transportation nodes and uh, other features that may improve the overall economic development of the, uh, the North Hills area. It was to be a smaller version of the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission. Uh, the, the last thing that I'm aware of that the authority undertook was a, um, a joint recreation study that had been done years and years ago. And uh, there has been no activity since that time. The, when I brought this authority up during a discussion with other, uh, the other uh, communities, and the school district, nobody was even aware that it existed. Uh, so the, and to be honest with you, the only reason that I was familiar with it, other than the fact that it was part of my briefing when I first got here, um, was an occasional bank statement that we get for about $1,100 it's sitting in the bank for the, the authority. Um, otherwise, there's been no activity for years and years. So you're proposing? I'm suggesting, I mean, we have to do one of two things. We either have to try to make use of it somehow, which I think would be difficult, uh, potentially difficult, um, just trying to come up with some game plans of what we would like to accomplish. But uh, dissolving it seems to make the most sense, to be honest with you at this point. So there's nothing you could think of that um, potential future that we could use it for or currently that we could use it for, like our maybe our ambulance authority or I, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there. If we don't need it, I'm forgetting rid of it. But if there's potential to use it, then. I, I, honestly, I think that the, the coordination between the communities may be uh, difficult uh, just trying to figure out what we would do first or what we would try to accomplish. I mean, I'm, I'm more than willing to, uh, to have that discussion prior to any dissolution. But I, right now, I, 
I'm not sure that we would have a, a project in, in mind. Okay. Uh, quick, quick question. I noticed that um, it, it looks like under the, the documents that North Allegheny has a member and other, other schools could be appointed a member if I read that right. Correct. Uh, is there any other vehicle that we have in existence that that has participation not only from municipalities but also from schools in in this way? Um, no, this would be the only one that would have this type of uh, participation. I mean the that I can think of. The only reason I ask, it's kind of piggybacking off of President Zachary's, you know, question is if we can, you know, if we can get creative to, to do something, if any of the municipalities or, or even the schools have a thought on, on how this could be utilized. I don't have an idea on it, um, but it seems unique in that there's the municipal members as well as direct representation by schools yeah. Or school districts. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I'm I'm more than willing to pose that question to the other communities in the school district. Um, I I honestly think that the last the based on the last conversation that I had um, with <clears throat> the other agencies, we were the only ones who probably even made an appointment to the authority. Yeah, yeah, it just seems it seems like it's something unique that's sitting out there and at some point we'll come up with a use for it, but you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's sitting there and we're just, we're holding money, a little bit of money. It's, it's not hurting anything uh, to keep it. It was just uh, a discussion that, that came up uh, during a conversation that uh, President of the council, <clears throat> town attorney and I were having on the agenda in general. And we thought, well, let's at least have the conversation. But I'm more than willing to send out a, a letter or an email to the other participants to see what their thoughts are. See if they'd like to try to make use of the, uh, the authority one way or another. There, I th everyone's going to have to take action to dissolve it anyhow, but. Right. I mean, I'm also the type of person who keeps the leftover extra screws from, from furniture that you put together because I think I might be able to use them in the future. So, you know, I, I am a hoarder that way. So. <laughs> um, so, and are, are there any other questions or comments about this? I have a. Just a general comment from what I did read um, through the formation documents and things like that. It does seem kind of like it, it was created in the time when our zoning was being created, when we did not have, um, you know, every, I, I don't want to be dramatic, but every inch of the, our community developed and there's not too much left. And I think that this was when McCandless, Franklin Park, Marshall, and the schools were in a lot more green space where they did need to come together and kind of have a vision and a plan for how the North Hills would look. Um, am I, you know, I'm not saying that there still wouldn't be that need today, but I think it was a different time when this was created. And the idea that I got for the purpose of it has changed. I kind of like the idea of talking to the other municipalities who maybe think that it's already been dissolved <laughs> don't, and don't know that we're still the only member in it. I don't know. So, um, so maybe contact them, Bob, and see, um, you know, what they say. But if they say no go, then the decision is made. They're like, no, we're really, we're tapped out. Or, I mean, we may be able to come up with an idea. Is, is there any could... way that we could do something with stormwater? or something that's the only thing I can think of that we're all really in this together. I think we would, we're not um, gonna be able to do much of anything with the money that we have available it would just be a matter of uh, uh, 
if I think my guess would be some type of a transportation project that might benefit us, but we'll talk and see if we can't get to get creative. Okay, are we okay with that? Talk to the other municipalities, see what they see, say, and if they're like, we're out, then we can say, okay, we're out too then. Okay. okay. Yeah. Would it, would it be something, um, is there some way to, uh, because of every everybody who's involved for, uh, you know, pooling, purchasing of certain materials or goods or anything like that? Um, I, like I said, I have no specific ideas, but, you know, stuff that maybe the, the North Hills Council of Governments doesn't cover that we might have a little bit more purchasing power in a group. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if that would be under if that would be development or not if that'd be under community development but just let, let's have bob talk to them and see what they say and maybe they want to <clears throat> have a meeting meeting there's supposed to be an annual meeting um the second week of february so um we missed we'd only, that we'd only be a little <laughs> we'd only be a little late about six years late you know we, we could do it um Okay. All right. Well, Bob, if you'll get back in your manager's report about that, and then we'll figure out what action we need to do from there. Will do. <clears throat> okay. Is there any other new business that anyone has? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm out of water. Okay. Um, hearing none, before we would adjourn, council is going to meet for a short executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Um, just to make that announcement, but there will be no further business um, this evening, public business. So is there a motion to adjourn? I moved. Okay. I Council Thank member you. Woods and uh, Council member Swagger. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. <laughs>